We're back to Neil Haley show. My guest today is comedian Modi. Modi, thanks for stopping by, man. And you know what? It's been a challenging time, but yet a great time to really spread the word of what's happening in Israel and stuff through this time and growing your career as a comedian. Isn't that true? In the la last it's year. Been, uh, it's been insane. Yeah. You know, when the war broke out, uh, I was in Israel. Um, and, uh, we left that day, the, the war, the war broke out. We went to, to do shows in, in, in Paris and, um, and there was no time to even to think about should we or should we not be doing shows. And we right away went into it and, you know, it's so important to give people an hour and a half of just relief. And then at the end, and after every show we, we sing Hatikva, um, which means hope. It's the Israeli national anthem, and just to re reorganize everybody, just to think about where our hearts and our minds are, and um, and this special that I uh, just released on ModiLive.com also is just uh, setting a positive light uh, and and pride in, in being Jewish. Right, and being there was that scary? Right when it happened? Yeah, it was. It was super scary. We were, you know, we we woke up in. Um, we woke up at the Satai Hotel, which is in Yafo, which is the Arab part of Tel Aviv. And um, in the morning, the sirens went off. And then later on, uh, it's funny, later on in the day, they took um, Bruno Mars was staying in the hotel. He was doing concerts in Israel. I was finishing a tour. He was doing concerts in Israel. And we saw them whisk him away to a private airplane. And um, I said to, to my husband, I said to him, um, uh, I'm so glad that they got Bruno Mars out of the hotel. And he says, why? I said, because if a bomb would have hit this hotel and both of us would have died, I would have gotten zero press coverage. <laughs> oh, man. But it's it's crazy yeah. to know that. And do you guys have those kind of game plans as celebrities where if something uh, you're in a, a situation like a 911 completely crazy what do you do uh, like a fire drill in a type of thing as, you know, performing in such big crowds and stuff, what to do? Yeah, there's always an, uh, there's a lot of security, a lot of security, all the shows, especially since October uh, 7th. And, um, and it's a, it's a calm, but it's, you know, it's, everything is set, everything is in its right place and people are organized and it's, uh, and it, it's, it's been great. And we've been having shows at 2,000 seat theaters. And on, on this tour that I'm on, I'm, I'm on a tour called uh, Know Your Audience, We're performing all over the place and, um, and releasing this special also called Know Your Audience. And, um, and it's just been, it's been amazing. It's been like, I feel like the timing of it was perfect. What, like, kind of, when you first started as a comedian, did you think you were going to go to this level and now how you're able to be able to really represent the Jewish community as a comedian, does it feel it? Fe it must feel great where where you're where you're going with all this. It feels amazing. It feels like you know you're not just doing comedy just to, for the laugh. There's the real purpose behind it. Um, you're bringing you know people, especially now. You know, my podcast is called "And Here's Modi" because when I first started doing comedy, I was doing a lot of private shows, and I'd be following fundraisers for like diseases or for uh, hospitals that are raising money for, or for cancer. And like literally they would be like, and here's Modi. And so, um, and so now this is like the ultimate and here's Modi. People are watching the war on their phone and they're um, completely engulfed in what's happening in Israel. And then all of a sudden the lights go off. I come on, I do an hour and change of comedy and people just have a moment to completely catch their breath. And at the end of every show, we sing Hatikva. We sing the Israeli national anthem, which is called Hope. And uh, it lets everybody remember where our hearts and our thoughts are. And you, you know who seems to, to love it the most? People who aren't Jewish. They say it was such a great moment when you sang the, the Israeli national anthem, and we really appreciated it. And uh, it's, there's, there's a purpose to, to doing comedy now, for sure. Have you been reaching out to other Jewish comedians to be part of what your message is and your mission? Yeah, I'm in touch with other Jew, uh, Jewish comedians. Everybody's doing whatever they do. Some people are in Israel doing shows. Some people are constantly uh, posting and uh, and bringing attention to what's happening through their platform. I'm 
I'm bringing laughs. I just know people need to catch a moment of, of laugh, laughing and share the laugh with their friends. And, um, you know, I always say be the friend that brings the friends to the comedy show. You see, you see a comic coming to town, buy a few tickets. And by the time they get there, people will be looking for you and they'll be looking for tickets. And, and it, it's a great way to, 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 to spread amazing energy. Oh, it totally is. It's like the energy must be through the roof. Uh, for yeah, the two. Yeah. So how does it feel to perform in front of an audience? What do you do to break the ice? I've talked to many comedians about that. Tell me how you break the ice. Um, I try to do something, you know, maybe local or just come right out and uh, speak to a few people. I don't do much crowd work, but right away I, when I walk out, I hellos, I do the somebody up front or somebody being seated. Um, it, every time it's different. There's no set icebreaker for me. There's no, I come out, I hit them with, if it's like a local, you know, joke of what's happening in the area and, and then go into my act. But the, and that's, a, that's a, one of the hardest things. I was just talking, I remember speaking with um, Mark Norman about that. Just how do you break the ice with the audience? It's an insane dynamic if you think about it. You're coming on in front of 2,000 people, and your job is to make them laugh. Right. It's like, wow, you know. As a former professional wrestler, Modi, now going back to the professional wrestling ring, and you had a match, and you were like the first match on the card. It didn't happen a lot because I'm almost legitimate seven foot. But when you get to that first or second match, where they don't know you from Adam because there's no television you have to break that ice and figure out how can you get this crowd go crazy, especially if you're a bad guy. And the same thing comes uh, with comedians. I forget one comedian I was talking to that always, uh, oh, he, he, uh, he headlined with Sinatra and he talked about how difficult some of these places were uh, to be able to break the ice and do all those things. So it's that process. Once you get the crowd in your hands, it's, there's no feeling like yeah. that. Right? That's the best feeling especially if you're opening for a singer because they came to see him. Like, what the hell is this now? Right. You know, that you're, you're not, you know, it's funny. I opened for, um, you're talking with Sinatra. I'm dying to know who, who, who that comic was. I'm looking was? it up. I forget his name. This is, this is me and my interviewing too many people, but I'm, I'm Googling it right now while you go, uh, um, um, and, I opened for uh, I opened for uh, Neil Sedaka. Did you ever hear of that of him? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of Neil Sedaka. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so I, I remember coming out there, and it was his audience. Luckily, they were like a little bit of an older audience. They weren't like it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to, you know. Sometimes when you, when you have a comic opening up for a singer, they don't want to see the comic. They just came to see the singer. Um, but that's even better when you get them under when you get when you get the, a, a, a grasp on them. You feel like, wow, I really got them. They didn't come to see me, and I really got them. Oh yeah. But keep was, in was, mind now, I'm doing shows. It's not it's not that vibe. I'm, they're coming to see me. They pay tickets. They park their cars. They've got babysitters. They are they are looking for me to succeed. It's like a different um, a different uh, dynamic. I just Googled it. It's Tom Dreisen. Uh, he always opened up for Frank Sinatra and he was, he's, he was involved in a lot of different things, working with uh, a comedy uh, with before WKRP and all that stuff. But yeah, he would open oh, wow. Sinatra and I have to find that interview. I might have to, and then he talked about how the crowd and how he was able to work the crowd to get that going, especially he talked about one time it was in Pittsburgh, 17,000 people and doing that. So it's, it's intriguing to talk to people yeah. about performance and how it feels. It's, to, it, it's, you know, it's all, it's so weird. I just did the Keswick center. It's a town in the middle of, of Penn, in the Pennsylvania area. Um, I, 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 this theater. Wow. The laughter, I guess it's how it's built or how it was set up. You really feel it. It's like a wave of laughter, and it's a different, and they were with me right away. And I felt it with my opening act. I felt backstage, I felt the, um, the energy of the audience's laughter. And sometimes the rooms are massive. 
I did town hall. It was um, 1,500 seats, and I'm doing the beacon now. And it, 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 you, you have to kind of make it intimate. Don't forget, this is comedy. There's a one man is standing in front of 2,000 people. It's not a band. You know, it's, it's, you've got to really make it intimate, like you're in every section of the room. Right. And the bigger the crowd, the more you got to work the crowd. Smaller the crowd, you can get really it get the couple people in the front row and then they get the rest of the crowd. But when you have a bigger crowd, you got to be like, okay, I got to really work it to get the people yeah. way far in the way. Because I remember wrestling in some arenas with two, three, four thousand people. But then I, when I did TV one time for WWE, it was the 10,000. But these 2,000, 3,000 people crowds, it's like, it's wild. And you just got, you have to keep them engaged. And I bet you that's a challenge for a comedian, right? Modi is, it's, yes keeping them engaged and how many comedians fail and never make it because of that. Um, you, you absolutely keep them engaged. It's so, you know, it's so funny you're saying this because it's, um, it's, it, it, they have to be focused on you in wrestling. They're watching you, but right. if they all of a sudden decide to, 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 to get a beer and have a cup of, uh, uh and have some yeah, popcorn and talk to their friend and then go back to watching you, they're, it's okay. It's not going to affect your set, your your set, your 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 wrestling match. Yeah. But comedy, they have to be engaged completely. Otherwise, the, you, you, there's no room for them to to walk away. You have to have them with you the whole time. It's, you're building on on a you're building on a premise. You're building on on being exactly. There. They, um, oh, yeah, it's, it's all right. Best place. place we can check out your live special, uh, your special that's on your website. Right? Where can they go? Modilive.com, M-O-D-I-L-I-V-E.com. The special is called Know Your Audience. Um, and it is, I, I, I know it's mine, but it's really a special. It's really a special. Also, you can find my Instagram on there, too. And, um, and we're always putting out clips and things that, are, that I love when people share. Let your friends have a laugh, too. Um, and the tour dates, there are a few left and a few seats left in, in um but it's mostly sold out, thank God. And uh, but the special, the special is for everybody. Enjoy it. It's called Know Your Audience on ModiLive.com. It's just enjoy it. All right, thank you, Modi. You're listening and watching the Neil thank Haley you, Show. And we'll be back in just a moment. 